Hello, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Ghosts Christmas Special, um, which I wasn't actually going to film a video on this, um, but I've had quite a few people ask me what I thought about it. So I thought the easiest way would be to kind of make a video, chat about all the things I enjoyed about it, and also kind of some of the conversations that have come up from this episode. Um, so obviously this video will be containing spoilers to the Christmas episode, so if you haven't seen it, go away and watch it and then come back to this video to hear my thoughts. So yeah, let's get into it. So overall, I really enjoyed the episode. I thought it was festive and Christmassy, uh, it had a very nice positive atmosphere to it for the most part. Um, it was funny, I thought they had some really good jokes in there. Um, the ones that top, come to the top of my head was when Alison writes Carol on the board and Pat gets excited thinking his ex, well, well wife I guess, Carol is um, coming to visit. Um, and also the joke where Julian is on the phone to his wife and he goes, oh excuse me, it's the woman from a wedding, that that was really funny. And also another thing that I really liked was I liked hearing them all sing again. It was very because I, mean, I don't think they have all sung and obviously a big part of horrible histories and why we all like that was the songs um so I thought it was really good hearing them sing and Charlotte Ritchie is such a good singer um I didn't expect that from her but yeah absolutely brilliant and the bleak midwinter, bleak midwinter song is actually very appropriate um considering this is filmed like pre-pandemic it's kind of cool how appropriate and fitting it is for you know the first Christmas we're all spending in a pandemic it's a very unusual Christmas so yeah I really enjoyed I really enjoyed the uh, addition of that song also the episode as a whole is quite fitting towards the pandemic as well again all filmed before it but it's kind of like not and almost kind of like finding your own family like obviously you've got the family that you know you're born with but also creating a family of friends you know that kind of coming together even like despite your differences will all come together and help us get through this so yeah I really enjoyed the episode so now I'm going to kind of get into just a few aspects of the show that I think deserve being like pointed out so first of all is Julian's well Julian is the main part of this episode really um I really enjoyed seeing a bit more of his backstory we haven't learned any like much more about his actual death but we've kind of learned, got, got a bit more of an insight into his life before he died. And as kind of expected, he was a pretty bad husband and father. Um, however, because he's kind of realising how bad he was when he was alive, there's kind of a pointing towards him becoming a possible, like, better person through his death, which I really like, a bit of redemption from Julian yeah it's nice to learn a bit more about his family like we've got a daughter who is an MP as well obviously for the Green Party which I thought was funny <laughs> um yeah I just I think it is really nice to see a bit more about him before his like death because a lot of the other characters that we've seen a backstory for it's always been related to their death whereas this has been related to mistakes he's made in his life and we're kind of getting to learn a bit more about him as a person rather than kind of like you know all being kind of around his you know position as an MP whereas obviously we're learning a bit more about that but it's just kind of like how that actually impacted his life because I think there's been hints towards well like him saying that him and his wife had like an open relationship when it's kind of obvious from the backstory now that they didn't and he was just cheating on her and leaving her to write, raise their child together um so yeah it's kind of showing how bad he was as a person but also kind of giving him a bit of redemption and I really liked all of the interaction with the baby um the fact the baby they've introduced the idea that babies can see the ghosts or some babies can see them which I think was cute and also I saw someone pointed out that maybe um do you, um maybe Pat's grandson saw Pat which I think would be a very cute nice thing to you know think about in relation to it being a Christmas episode it brought a very nice meaning to the episode, kind of like bringing family together, you know, maybe not through actually like talking to them or like, you know, physical interaction, but also kind of 
connecting online that's very vague <laughs> um reach there but like you know connecting online even if you can't be there in person again pre-pandemic I don't know how <laughs> how they've done this and kind of making amends um that kind of it's not really too late to kind of think about what you are as who you are as a person and what you can kind of improve um so yeah I I thought Julian's story was yeah very good you can kind of see that he was kind of troubled in a way um and yeah I hope we do learn a bit more about him maybe get a bit of a redemption which might which would be quite good um and I think this um episode was actually written by Simon Farnaby um so yeah that is really good I really enjoyed that and uh, we actually got introduced to a completely new set of characters and those are Mike's family um, which I thought was a really interesting addition. I was very excited for it. I wanted to learn a bit more about Mike and Alison's like backstory because, quite frankly, they're probably the people that we know the li- like least about because we kind of see them from, you know, inheriting the house. Um, we know they struggle with money, but we don't really know about their family. We don't know about any job they did. You know how they met. Um, so yeah, I'd like to know a lot more about Mike and Alison. Um, so we got a bit of Mike's family. Um, kind of so generally I did really enjoy um, the addition of Mike's family I thought they had some quite funny moments however they were really mean and I don't I don't like how they treated Mike I am a big fan of Mike which apparently surprises a lot of people that people like Mike I think he is such a great character Um, so I didn't like the way that he was treated as if he can't do anything for himself or that he wasn't capable of doing anything and the sisters like the mum and dad I felt you know that's what mum and dads do they want to do everything for their children and you know sometimes may have a hard time stepping back but the sisters are so mean like it kind of went past that kind of sibling rivalry it was just kind of like mean-spirited and I didn't really like that as kind of part of the Christmas episode um you know all resolves in the end and all happy and, and whatever but I just thought it was quite mean like filming a you know him having a breakdown and related to this there has been a lot of discussion about Mike being neurodivergent um a lot of people obviously I'm not talking from my own experience here but a lot of people with um ADHD and um you know similar things to that and also autism Asperger's they they relate relate to Mike's character a lot which I think is quite interesting and if we do take the idea that Mike is neurodivergent which a lot of people do think he is then them basically triggering a breakdown or a meltdown is very mean. Um, obviously, we don't know if this is confirmed, but that's what a lot of people have taken from it, which I do kind of get. Um, obviously, I don't know much about them, but yeah, I, I think it, it was a very weird addition, I thought that. You know, they could have had some like fun sibling rivalry, but I think that it did take it a bit too far. Okay, and relating to Mike is this kind of love triangle between Mike, Alison and Thomas. And before I get into this bit, I just want to say, if you ship Alison and Thomas together, you know, you do you, you can ship whoever you want, you can write fan fiction about whoever you want. I don't really, like, care that much, um, but I just don't want it to be in the actual show, and I will explain why. So a lot of the discourse around Mike being a bad husband comes from a few things that I think are quite frankly invalid opinions. That's mean to say, but so one complaint they have about Mike is that he didn't believe her when she first started seeing ghosts. And my question to you is, if your significant other started saying she could see ghosts after a head injury, you know, her basically dying, would you believe her straight away? Mm, no, I don't. I frankly think a very, very, very small minority would believe her. And I think it's more responsible for him to think, oh, something is wrong in her head, you know, considering she just had a head injury. I think that is a more responsible attitude and approach to have than just going, okay, yeah, you can see ghosts. Let's not take you to a doctor. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And he does come around and you know understand that this isn't a medical issue and this is something real before he gets proof of you know the ghosts pressing the button and I think that is a very I don't know I didn't realize anybody didn't like Mike until reading some things on reddit and stuff Uh, yeah I feel like he behaved better than anybody would 
um, you know, <laughs> I just, I think that's a very weird complaint to have. Um, another thing is that in the Christmas episode, he is preoccupied with, you know, trying to do everything himself and he's not paying any attention to Alison. And it's like, he's, the whole point of this one is him trying to prove himself to his family, but not being given the opportunity to do so, which I sympathise with him with that. I don't think, oh, he's a terrible husband because he's trying to do something nice. My impression of Mike is that he is quite an insecure character. Um, So we can look at him being threatened by, not threatened, but feeling insecure about Alison, you know, her celebrity crush coming to the house and also her, you know, perhaps meeting her ex-boyfriend. He's very insecure. And I think the wedding episode, as soon as he hears that, oh, I did have a bit of cold feet for marrying him, he takes that so personally. And he's obviously, like, cares about her deeply and is in love with her loads. Like, I don't... He's obviously very insecure. And he's trying to prove himself both to Alison, probably, that he is a good husband, and also to his family that he is a grown-up, he knows what to do, he knows how to take care of himself but he's just not being given the opportunity to do so. Oh, the other one was that he didn't want, he wouldn't let Alison sing carols. And my, yeah, like, yeah, he probably could have asked, but as soon as they walk into the house, they say, oh, we hate carols. You know, so it's not him being like, no, Alison, I'm not going to let you. It's like, oh, my parents are fussy. They're quite kind of opinionated. And I don't think they'll take your suggestion seriously. Um, so it's kind of like protecting her in a way. So on to Thomas. <laughs> so my main, I do like, genuinely like Thomas as a character. I think he's really funny and I like the character very much. My point is that if Matt wasn't playing Thomas and it was just some person that we don't really know, um, you know, he wouldn't be shipped with Alison because if we just take his character out of context for a second, so... This is a hyper-romantic man who falls in love, well, he says he falls in love with a woman he is never really spoken to, he falls in love first sight, and she's a married woman, and he is continuously trying to kind of break down their marriage, and, you know, trying to entrap her under mistletoe, and, like, steal a kiss from her, and even says he would go as far as to kill Alison or her husband in, in order to be with her. It sounds a bit creepy, doesn't it? Yeah. He wouldn't be shipped in, like, I think any other capacity. If it wasn't a comedy, if it wasn't kind of, like, light-hearted and, you know, Thomas wasn't being played by somebody that a lot of viewers have a crush on, then I don't think they'd be being shipped at all. And, you know, I don't think Thomas is a creep. It is his personality. I feel like he is trying to kind of get his long-lost love in some way. Because, obviously, Isabel, he she's the one that gets away and I think he is all trying to find somebody to replace that I don't think he will ever find someone who replaces her and my kind of idea like all the humour from Thomas comes from him being a hyper romantic person with an un- in love with an unattainable woman only one because she is married and secondly because he is a ghost like how would a relationship with a ghost even work and, you know, they always say how he's had multiple fancies over the years. And so his love for Alison would probably move on if another woman that reminds him of Isabel uh, came into the house, you know? Also, related to this, Katie Wicks um, said in one of the kind of, like, live streamy things they did um, that a massive part of Mary's character comes from the fact that she won't talk about her death. She won't talk about why she was burned at the stake, which is what makes her character funny it's probably the main aspect of her character. Well, not really the main, but like it adds a lot of humour to her character. And she says they don't know whether they're going to kind of have her talk about her death because a massive part of her comedy comes from that. So taking that away would remove that part of her character. And I think this applies to Thomas. Having him be in a relationship with the woman he loves, the replacement of Isabel, would take away that comedy from his character. Do you see where I'm coming from? Another thing that people are fixating on is the fact that Alison gave Thomas a little kiss on the cheek, uh, which, you know, I didn't really take that as kind of like a romantic, oh, this is making it canon. I just kind of thought that was kind of his Christmas gift. And it was it was nicer that way than her being trapped in the mistletoe. It was her choice to give like him a little peck on the cheek. It wasn't a romantic kiss. It was like a friendly, 
I would say, kind of just, you know, friendship kiss on the cheek. Um, and all the other ghosts got a gift. Um, my favourite was Kitty with the snow globe. Um, I thought that was really sweet. And yeah, I don't really take that as being something very serious. It's just a gift, a little, giving him a little something that he wants, um, you know, basically to just appease him for a bit. Um, I don't think it's going to go anywhere personally, but we'll see. Hopefully it doesn't because I, don't, I like Mike too much for that to happen. And I obviously feel that, you know, Thomas is a really good character. I do very much enjoy him, but I just don't think it would be the same if he did get into a relationship because it comes from this kind of like love lawn kind of character that is never going to get with the woman of his dreams um so yeah that's what I think um let me know what you kind of think about you know the whole Alison Mike Thomas love triangle I'm interested to hear what other people think so something that's quite sad about this Christmas episode is that it is Tom Kingsley who is the director of season one and two it is his last episode as a director for the show um which I find is quite sad um, mainly because of the way this came about um he said on his twitter he kind of showed kind of some of the things and he was basically let go because he wouldn't kind of let go of this vision that he wanted to film the entire series in three hours as kind of like a record thing and it basically like didn't match the BBC's creative vision and they wanted somebody who was more conventional um, for their series, which is very sad. I think he is an absolutely amazing director. Um, so if you're interested, I would definitely recommend going to watch Staff Let's Flaps, which um, Tom is the director of. And it actually has Katie, who plays Mary in it, and Keel, that plays Mike, as kind of estate agents. And Charlotte Ritchie, Charlotte Ritchie actually appears in one of the episodes. It's very funny. And I think if you like ghosts, you'll probably like it. Um, yeah, I highly recommend. And if you watch Fleabag, um, the main character is in Fleabag. I can't remember the name of his character in Fleabag, but he's in Fleabag. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend. So taking the place of director is um, Nick Collette. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Um, but he, um, I don't actually know much about what he has done, but he has directed the Channel 4 and Hulu show um, Max. So I have seen like a few clips of Max. Um, I think it was on after Taskmaster um, on Channel 4. And so I have seen a bit of it and it does seem to kind of have the same comedy style um, apart from it's a bit like more adult humour, I guess. Um, so I don't have any doubts really about the series because it is still going to be written by the Idiot Six. Um, so yeah, I, I think he's going to do a good job. Yeah, I have high hopes. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've linked my Instagram and my Twitter down below. I'm going to try and start using them a bit more. Um, and yeah, if you like this video, please give it a like and comment down below what you thought about the Christmas special and kind of what you felt about kind of Mike's family and the love triangle thing between Mike, Alison and Thomas. So yeah, and if you really want to see more videos, please click, click subscribe. I will have lots of videos coming out soon, probably after I've done my exams, but after that we should be good to do have quite a good regular upload so yeah i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video bye